Hi, I'm Rudy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to review and uh, give a short uh, introduction and uh, user instruction for the uh, Wima ASC-6, which is an analog to NMEA 2000 converter. My use case for this device is to uh, connect my old uh, V8 gasoline motor in my boat to my NMEA 2000 bus in order to show the values in my uh, more modern digital cage cluster or combined cage and uh, my MFD. So let's get into the review. So uh, this one I found out that there is not that many uh, information or videos at the moment uh, available in YouTube. So I thought that I will make mine uh, and that's for a couple of reasons because I've actually have ran into some um, I'd say challenges with this one. Um, nothing really major but just want to let you guys know about that if you're about to purchase uh, one of these or any other type of uh, NMEA 2000 converters. Um, first of all there are not that many available I used to have this one, uh, the one that is quite cheap, available in, in basically everywhere. I had issues with this one, uh, the numbers and the readings were fluctuating a lot. Basically every reading that this produces was fluctuating quite a lot in my boat. And I would want to get rid of that. Now I'm doing an engine uh, replacement. So at the same go I thought that okay, I need to get something else. Why I wanted this one is that this is uh, somewhat configurable. I learned afterwards that it's not that configurable as I thought it would be, which is a little bit annoying, but I will uh, go a little bit more into details about that as well while uh, I'm uh, going into the menus and everything. So what this can do, uh, what I plan to do with this is to monitor uh, oil pressure, coolant temperature, trim fuel level and then I was planning to have another uh, temperature sensor for the incoming raw cooling water because of the reason that it's, it's a place where I can monitor whether, whether there is incoming water or not. So that brings me uh, into the first problem with this, that this the temperature range with this one goes only to 40 degrees and if I want to measure the seawater temperature here in southern Finland it's not gonna be even close to 40 ever. It would need to be somewhere around 25 degrees which would be a useful temperature to judge whether the um, temperature is uh, or w whether there is water or not and for that um, I actually have this uh, this another um, device here which I could use to monitor those uh, NMEA 2000 messages which could possibly potentially use to um, trigger those those um, alarms like audible alarm or uh, light or whatever but that can't be done with this one so that's one issue and also I found out that uh, in the web page of the manufacturers they actually state that this starts from zero degrees I'm talking about uh, Celsius degrees, by the way, but that's not the case. It's only in this uh, leaflet, this uh, usual user manual that comes with the device that says that uh, coolant temperature starts from 40 degrees. There's also another temperature reading here, which is oil, te oil temperature that starts from, from 50. And then about the configurability, I thought that those uh, resistance ranges that this thing uses could be configured so that it applies to the temperatures as well. But that actually applies only for the like fuel tank, um, fresh water tank, waste tank, holding tank, whatever it is. Only for those ones you can configure these settings, not for the temperature. I thought everything was gonna be configurable, but it was not the case. Still, 
I think this is the best alternative for me because there are not that many uh, these con of these converters on the market. There are some that are actually much more expensive and looks fancy and seem to be like a really good devices but then when you go and look into these same kind of uh, specifications you find out that that actually they are not doing much better than those if someone of you there viewers if you know about a device that would be doing all of this or being like fully configurable let me know especially if the price range of that is under 500 uh, euros or dollars. Now in this entire setup I have a uh, worth of around 600 euros of devices um, so that I can use this setup so I kind of would like to stick with these because I already spent the money so anyway uh, that's my um, like a functional judgment of the device Let's now go and check what it, what it does and um, I've connected my little NMEA uh, bus here terminated in both ends powered by this, this lead here and um, basically we have this connected to these potentiometers that can feed some information into the NMEA bus and then we can monitor those here in, in my uh, PC Currently, what I have configured here is, I uh, need to take my cheat, cheat paper here. So I have oil pressure over here. Currently, it shows 90. It's really sensitive. As you can see, it works. And I have a uh, coolant temperature, should be uh, engine, engine temperature. Obviously, that's coolant temperature. I have that in here. Okay, that works. Then what else I have? I have um, engine oil temperature over here. Is that working? Okay, that starts from 50 as I stated before, so it doesn't show anything yet more than that. Okay, now we get into the range. By the way, these are one uh, kilo ohm linear potentiometers here. So I can manipulate all of the values here pretty much. But as you can see, it only goes to 40, 40 at its minimum. One thing uh, that is really uh, not that convenient to um, give you a representation how to how to uh, work with that is the RPM signal. There is this uh, white lead here, which is meant for that, and it's actually configured for that. I can try to actually uh, make my own RPM signal. Just, I mean, I don't have any any like a single generator here. Let's see if my fingers are fast enough to make it show anything there. Okay, there was something like 96 RPM. I'm too too. I'm too slow. I'm too slow. Yeah. Anyway, that fun functions and that works. Let's get then to like more of the um, instructions how to use this. Hopefully you can see the display here. I'll actually try to zoom my camera in a bit. Here, hopefully the display is visible. So what do we have here? First of all, uh, you have two protocols to choose from. You have the um, NMEA 2000 or you can change it to whatever this was, J1939 protocol. We're using NMEA 2000 here. So let's stick to that. Then we have here uh, signal uh, specific information, we have uh, something called instance information and then we have a type information here. And how this works is that uh, this type means the channel, the analog channel, what comes into your, uh, where you wire all of your sensors and stuff. Uh, I need to take my, my another cheat again here, just to give you an idea how this works. So of course in the manual it says channel 
one, two, three, four, five, six. In the device is channels or types zero, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, confusingly enough, as these always are, type O something means channel O. Channel type one something means uh, type Type 1 means uh, channel 2, and we have channel 3, channel 4, channel 5, channel 6, and then we go back to 0, which is channel 1. Colors go uh, red, yellow, orange, green, brown, red 1, yellow 2, orange 3, uh, green 4, brown 5, and white channel 6. Here, by the way, it says the channel 6 and in brackets RPM. That's the only channel you can use for RPM. But you can configure it to be something else. But then any of the other channels cannot be any uh, RPM. So how does this work? Uh, basically, I covered now the first digit of these two digits here. This was really, really confusing to me in the beginning, even though I read through the manual for a couple of times. There's this table here, which shows which is what. But it's really a little bit confusing because for uh, basically everything else than the final uh, one, you have five options, but that's because we can't do RPM anywhere else than the, in channel number five. And then you have these numbers, but basically it me means that you can do all of those choices all of these choices, fuel level, freshwater level, wastewater level, uh, live well level, whatever that means, oil level, blackwater level, oil pressure, uh, if oil pressure uh, one to five bar, or oil pressure uh, zero, uh, zero to five bar, or oil pressure zero to ten bar, coolant temperature, oil temperature, rudder, turbo pressure, trim, and, tr and other trim, there are two settings for trim, either it's uh, from 0 to 190 ohms or uh, 190 to 0 ohms, and then engine speed, which is only for the channel number 5. So, how do we change this? We're now, we have now selected uh, channel number 0, which is channel number 1. We press a long press here and we can change it to be any of these settings here. So basically whenever you, whenever the type number is flashing, the first digit stays as is. Because you're only working on one channel and this, uh, and, and this is now channel number zero, which is channel number one. And I'm changing, for example, I had here the temperature or the coolant temperature, that's 08. Then I press a long press and I confirm that. Then I can move on to the next channel, which now shows uh, 19, which means we are working on channel uh, number 1, which is channel uh, 2. In the manual and then you will if you want to change we're now uh, 9 which is here you can see it's 1 9 or 9 that's oil temperature but now I want to change this to coolant temperature again because this is important by the way I have the um, alarm device here set up So it doesn't like my coolant temperature value that, that just came up. Because I have my uh, engine temperature here that is uh, 100 and almost 120 degrees. That's why that, that alarm came up. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to take my camera. I'm running out of battery. I'm taking this camera to, to give you some better view here. So. Uh, 
Jesus. Okay, now, now I'm satisfied with the temperatures and, and the machine is satisfied. So, what I was saying, I put um, now two channels to be coolant temperature. How, and how could this know that these are two separate temperatures? That's when we need to do the following. Here in the menu, when I go with these arrows, uh, we see something that is called instance. Now we can see that is 01. That means in our our uh, NMEA bus it is the engine number 1. Now if I go back to to my type and move on back to the temperature sensor number zero or one and see what we have here for an, for the instance number, that's zero. So that's how you differentiate of which engine you are getting the information from or which instance because you know if it's a fuel tank it's not an engine effectively. And this says that you can have uh, 16 different instances to work with. That should be enough. Unfortunately, my CAN reader, this is a CAN reader, uh, NMEA bus is essentially a CAN bus. It really unfortunately doesn't show me anything more than two engines. Nowadays, you know, uh, engines are, it can be, you know, four, five, six engines in, in, uh, in uh, those crazy boats. I have one, I think one or two is the most typical one. So this basically covers all the functionality of this device. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please comment. I try to answer any, every single one of those. And uh, if you are interested in this kind of a content, please let me know about that as well. I mean, I have those uh, other small devices there. Should those be of your interest, uh, I'm happy to explain how, how those work. Uh, I'm happy to explain more about um, NMEA 2000. Of course, that's limited to what I really know about that. I'm not gonna lie and tell you that, you know, I'm the most knowledgeable of, about these things. But I think there might be quite many of you guys who are working with a little bit older boats but want to modernize the technology in the boat a little bit. And uh, my judgment with this uh, device is that it has its limitations. Uh, the quality seems to be okay. It's actually not that difficult to configure when you do it once. And um, what else? Of course, limitation of the temperature ranges and, and stuff like that. That's a little bit of a minus, but let's see. I think I can then in real life see how this works. Only when I get it installed into the boat and uh, see how that kind of uh, performs with the, how the readings, readings read and uh, so on and so forth. So, thank you for watching and uh, as I said, if you like this kind of a content, let me know, like, subscribe, all of that stuff that you should do on YouTube if you're interested in something. Hey, until next time, bye.